booktube Lynette here and today I'm going to be talking to you about my reading plans for the month of June. Uh, before I start um, I don't know whether it will be picked up on camera or not uh, but it's very hot here in the UK uh, it's already reached I think almost 20 degrees and it's only 10 o'clock in the morning um, so my window is open so you might hear some bird song um, and also my bedroom door is open a little as well uh, because it is so hot and my bedroom gets the sun right at the start of the day um, so you might hear a little bit of background noise coming from the rest of the flat uh, <clears throat> so I apologise if that's picked up and if that uh, has an effect on the audio uh, but yes so I'm going to talk about the books that I plan on reading in June and to start with I thought I would tell you about the goals because I've been setting I've set myself a, um, a goals for the year uh, but also at the start of every month I have some little individual monthly goals that I try to set for myself just to try to keep me on a roll. So I thought I'd tell you this month, because I don't think I've done it in previous months, uh, what those actual goals are. So the first two goals are ones that are set every single month and that's because they relate to annual readathons that I'm doing. The first goal is to read and the next book in the in death series for the in death read along and goal number two is to read at least two books for romanceopoly readathon now i always set myself three books for romanceopoly but i always set my goal to two books just so that i am actually making some progress throughout the year so the third goal that i've set myself this month is to pick a new classic and start a new classic uh if uh, you th I think this is going to go up before my wrap up um, but yes I am at the point where I need to pick a new classic I have already picked the classic so when I tell you about the books I will tell you which one I've picked I'm a bit intimidated by the classic that has come up because I use a randomizer app to oh. do it uh, the first one that it came up with in classics was yeah I, I ran it twice but I'll tell you which one I've picked later on in the video so the fourth goal that I've set myself this month is I have picked a series that I want to make some progress with this month and I've set myself the target to finish at least two of those books this month. Uh, I've got the remainder of the books which is more than two on the TBR uh, but I thought I'd set myself two books rather than all of them just in case I run out of time in the month and I don't actually get to them all and then the fifth and final goal that I've set myself for June is to read at least five percent of A Clash of Kings this is the book that is on my tidy up my kindle uh, goal for the whole of the year and it's been going since January and I think I've made hardly any progress. I listened to quite a chunk of it. I listened to about 10 hours of it in March when I went on the reading retreat. But I think I've listened to like 1-2% since. So I've set myself the target to read at least 5% of it this month. Which does mean that I am going to have to sit and listen to it at weekends uh, to try and make any progress at all. It's not something I feel I can pick up and actually read the book. I find it very slow going. It is something that I find I need to be doing something else at the same time. So the audiobooks do lend themselves really to this story for me. It makes it far easier for me to to deal with because they are I've never been intimidated by big books, uh, but I do find these quite intimidating. So those are the goals for the month. Now let's talk about the books I'm going to read. So the first book on the list that I've chosen to read this month is the, or start this month, I don't think I'll read it all, is the classics novel and that is Tess of the D'Urbervilles by Thomas Hardy. This was a book that was actually set in secondary school however I swapped secondary schools so by the time I started the school where it was set they'd already read it and they were just mopping up some work on it so I never actually got to it. Tess of the Derbyfields is about Tess Derbyfield who when her family becomes severely impoverished she is sent by her parents to the nearby family of Derbyfields and to pretend that she is um, one of them of their lineage. There she meets Alec Derbyville who unfortunately takes advantage of her and also causes some further issues for her 
and after that she then meets Angel Claire and again um, because of her past with the D'Urbervilles this affects her relationship with Angel. It uh, sounds like a bit of a toing and froing romance novel, fictional historic romance novel uh, so it does fit with some of the genres that I read so I am really looking forward to trying to pick this one up like I say it's one that since about the age of 14 it's been on my radar to read but just never got round to it. So the next book on the list actually covers two tasks this month and this one will cover the next book to read in the In Death series and it also covers the first role on the Romanceopoly board for this month which is Killer Crescent and Killer Crescent is to read a book with a detective or PI as the main character and Eve Dallas fits that character. So the book is Vengeance in Death and in Vengeance in Death again there's a killer on the loose that Eve has to track down. Uh, this time he's quite intelligent and he leaves riddles for her to solve and also he uh, has links to her husband which Eve finds out through investigating the two deaths that have happened. Uh, I believe this does put Rourke uh, in danger so Eve will have to protect Rourke as well as try to find the killer at the same time. I've been thoroughly enjoying these books so I am looking forward to it. It probably will be the first book I pick up on the 1st of June uh, because I just I, I really enjoy reading them. I'm trying not to read more than one a month but I do love them and I could easily binge these books so I do highly recommend them. The next book on my TBR is Dear Aaron by Mariana Zapata and this book is to complete a square for Romanceopoly and this is to complete the post office square. The post office prompt is to read a book where the romance started online. Dear Aaron is about a young woman who decides to start writing to a soldier overseas and this is how their romance starts. Initially she started it just to keep the uh, the soldier in question happy because obviously they're away from all their family and it is nice for them to receive letters from home just keeping them in touch with the place that they live and love the one thing the young woman never intended to do was to fall in love that's all I know about it um, I'm assuming that at some point he's going to come back to the USA and they're going to meet and obviously see where their relationship goes from there so the fourth book on the list is No One Ever Has Sex on a Tuesday by Tracy Bloom. This is to fulfil, again, Romanceopoly and it's to fill one of the library squares, which is one where you just pick a book off your romance TBR and read it. There is no trope, there is no theme, you just read whatever book you want. This book is about Matthew and Katie who have a one night stand after their school reunion. They were childhood sweethearts while they were at school uh, but they're both involved with other people now. There is a chance meeting eight months later. Katie is pregnant and so is Matthew's wife and they have to confront the fact that Katie and Matthew could be sharing a child. There's all sorts going on again with uh, Matthew's wife who is panicking over her own pregnancy and Katie's partner who is refusing to take fatherhood seriously and it's all the drama that ensues from all of that including the fact that they could be having a child together without their partners knowing. So the next book on the list is one that I absolutely have to read in the month of June and this book is Dead Pretty by Samantha Towell. This is her latest release, it's coming out towards the end of June and I have been lucky enough to be accepted to be on her team to receive advanced reader copies to review the book before it's released. I have done this for Samantha before but she has now formalised that process and she has selected a few of her followers to actually be a team of people who will do this for her and promise to do this for her. So I have to read this book this month. Uh, I am thoroughly looking forward to this. Uh, this book is about a young woman who discovers she has a stalker and unfortunately the the stalker escalates um, into murders and 
it's all based around her and she finally manages to get away from the stalker and start a new life. Uh, however, the murders start up again and she has to wonder whether the original stalker was the right man or whether there is someone else involved completely. It sounds really intriguing. It's a thriller romance, which is not really what Samantha has written before. She's kind of bordered on this sort of thing before um but not out and out thriller so it's a move away from what she normally writes uh but i'm sure it's going to have her great brand of romance in there so i'm really looking forward to reading this and i'm very very grateful to samantha to select me to be on her arc team um, and to send me this book later on this month <clears throat> so the next book on my list is a chunker uh, again like the classic that I've picked for this month it is not one that I intend to finish this month I really don't think I can because it's almost a thousand pages of words uh, but it is to continue a series it's not part of the two books from a series that I want to read goal uh, because it's just too big for that it, it would never happen um, I'm back at work now so my reading has slowed up considerably because I just don't have the same amount of time. I don't have seven full days a week to read now. I have two days at weekends and I have a couple of hours in the evenings to read. Um, and even then, that's not every evening uh, because of other activities I have. So that this book that I'm talking about is The Shadow Rising by Robert Jordan. This is book four of his Wheel of Time series. Uh, if you watched my vlog... Um, for Tome Topple, then you'll know that I read The Dragon Reborn, which is book three, um, during Tome Topple, absolutely loved it and was actually itching to get on with The Shadow Rising. But I had other plans, so I didn't. It would have derailed them completely. And I'm glad I didn't because, like I say, it is a huge tome. It's nearly a thousand pages, as I said. And these are quite intimidating books. There is lots and lots of detail in them. But in this one, basically, the... Seals on Shial Gull are weakening and the Dark Lord is able to reach out further into the world. Min in Tarvalon is seeing prophecies of downfall. The White Cloaks have travelled to the two rivers in search of and on the trail of Matt, Perrin and Rand. In Cantorin, the High Lady Saroth is considering her plans to bring the Shaunchen back to the mainland. And in Tyr, Rand is considering his next move as the Dragon Reborn. It will be a move, apparently, that no one can predict. So yes, very intrigued by this one. The series is starting to pick up for me now. I found the first two very difficult to read. Uh, but the third one I flew through in about, well, four days, um, in about 15 hours. So I'm expecting this to, to get much better now. I'm hoping that it will build some momentum because I'm heading towards the books that are known as the slog by the Wheel of Time fandom um, and I'm hoping that they'll have enough in them to push me through that slog. So the next book is a brand new release that came out in May and it is one that's going to be all over booktube I um, predict over the next few weeks because it is by a popular author, and that book is Burn by Patrick Ness. I received this copy of Burn in my book box subscription that I get, and this came in the May box, and I've never read Patrick Ness before, so I'm quite intrigued. Now, I don't know if I'm going to get to this one. The, I do like the sound of the premise in this, uh, but... I'm not sure if I'm going to get to it or not. I've got quite a lot to read, um, so I'm being a bit looser with my TBR, and I may start it, I may not, uh, but it's there. It's probably going to stay on the pile, um, and I may even pick it over other books. But this book is set in 1957 America, and it's about a young woman whose family run a farm, and they have hired a dragon to help them out. The dragon is on the farm primarily to work but also he's been called there because of a prophecy and I think there's a little bit of politics involved there's uh, quite a bit um, sounding like it's involved and it's not that long so 
I don't know whether it'll be part of a series or um, I haven't actually looked any of that up. I just literally know what it said on the inside flap of the cover. So looking forward to this one if I pick it up this month. So the next book on the list, as I said, is A Clash of Kings by George R. R. Martin. Like I said, I only want to read 5% of this this month. I can't really remember where I'm up to because I haven't actually read any of it for quite a while. Uh, so I'm not quite sure where I am in the story, but yes, I need to get on and read some more of it. Uh, this is the second book in George R. R. Martin's A Song of Ice and Fire series. And there's just so much going on. I think uh, there's a lot centering around Daenerys and the dragons and Jon and, and the people in the north. He's uh, across the wall and they are out searching for someone. Search, I can't remember the name of the... Uh, the enemy they're searching for but I think this is when they really find out about the White Walkers um, so yes uh, I am looking forward I do enjoy the story I just I find them a bit dense to get through so I really do need some additional help to actually get through them and then the final four books on the list are all from the same series and these books are Prince Caspian, which is book four of the Chronicles of Narnia. The Voyage of the Dawn Treader, book five of the Chronicles of Narnia. The Silver Chair, book six of the Chronicles of Narnia. And The Last Battle, book seven of the Chronicles of Narnia. Now, these this is the series that I have said I want to try and read two of this month. Uh, primarily Prince Caspian and, Vo and Voyage of the Dawn Treader. I have read both of those in the past. In fact, I've read them all in the past, so they are rereads. But I was about 10, I think, when I read them originally. These are my pristine paperback copies uh, that I've got. Um, I do have hardback copies behind on this shelf behind here, which are the ones that I originally read. Um, but I'd like to keep them in the condition they're in. They are a bit battered, um, but I'd also like to keep these in the condition that they're in as well. So I have them on my e-reader and I will be reading the e-book versions. I started a reread of these a couple of years ago and I've gotten as far as book three. So I've read the, up to The Horse and His Boy. Um, Prince Caspian isn't one that I really remember much about. The Voyage of the Dawn Treader is my absolute favourite of the ones I've read and I remember nothing of The Silver Chair and The Last Battle. So I have no idea what the, how the series ends, which is why I wanted to reread them in the first place. But like I say, I want to try and read at least Prince Caspian and The Voyage of the Dawn Treader. And if the mood takes me, then I'm going to move on to The Silver Chair and The Last Battle and maybe do that over other books on my list as well. I'm sure a lot of you know what The Chronicles of Narnia are about. Uh, they are about children who get pulled into this other world, Narnia, which in some ways resembles Earth, but in a lot of ways doesn't. And they, it's about the adventures that those children have. Um, the children can only travel there for so long. So in Prince Caspian, I believe that it's, I believe that might be the last one that all four of the Pevensey children get pulled in. The Voyage of the Dawn Treader, I think the two youngest get pulled in with their cousin Eustace um, because I know Eustace is a big character in this one and then I can't remember who gets pulled into the Silver Chair and the Last Battle. Uh, so looking forward to reading those and just refreshing my memory on what they were all about and hopefully I'll get two of them done if not all four. So those are my reading plans for the month of June. Uh, let me know down below in the comments what your reading plans are. I'd love to hear what you're planning to read this month. And I will speak to you all again soon. Bye.